This is the Friday, September 2nd, 2016 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. We are glad to have you, and it is good to hear, you're right, not a bullish take on these commodity markets, but at least not a terribly negative take. It seems like we're, we're bombarded with negativity in the year of big harvests. You know, the thing that always amazes me is people will look at today's situation and extrapolate it out for two or three years. When we all know that in six months, we can have a weather problem in a major growing area and change the whole supply demand table, and we frequently do. And so markets cycle up and they cycle down. We're now on the downside of it, and we're growing demand, and we'll come out of this. And so the, the main thing that people need to keep in mind is you make the decisions you need to make today. Don't make big, long-term marketing decisions in this environment because you can't see what's out that far ahead. So we just try to keep, keep people focused on what do you need to do today. And what we're trying to do is maintain as much inventory as we can to carry into the winter months because we think we'll have better prices then. We think we'll get paid for storing it. Now, with that in mind, and I know you do have a buy signal uh, on corner, at least you did earlier this week. Would that buy signal extend out to December 17 if I'm just interested in buying a little protection that far out? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting question thinking about buy signals. Whenever we have a buy signal, it's for every year of corn that you're interested in buying. And whenever we have a sell signal, it's the same kind of situation every year that you're interested in selling. And interestingly enough, you can buy corn for 2016, 17, 18, and 19 in Chicago already raised, already at the terminal, a warehouse receipt, so to speak, for less money than most farmers can raise it on the farm. So if anyone wants to expand their farming operation, the cheapest place to do it today is a finished product already in Chicago. You bet. Well, now let's talk about the cotton market. We talk about a, a market that had a tremendous spike, and now we've pulled back, but we seem to be trading in a range. Well, what's your take on the cotton market going forward? Well, the spike came earlier in the in the uh, summer mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you know we saw the demand picking up and realized that maybe uh, the the uh, cotton supplies in China were going to get pulled down quicker than they thought, and they've pulled them down. They've taken almost 20 percent of that inventory and moved it through the system. Uh, then we this week we started to worry for a few days anyway about the hurricane coming through, uh, and uh, looks like maybe about if you start looking at the amount of cotton produced in, the, in those areas and the, and the stage of the crop, it looked like maybe 4% of the U.S. crop is vulnerable, and today people were not so much worried about it, and so the market kind of slid back down. But the, the fundamentals on cotton are improving, and we think we have better prices on out forward, and so we would approach cotton kind of the same way. We're no rush to sell. We think prices will get better. Okay. We've got a number of questions from our social media followers, both on Twitter and on Facebook, so I just kind of wanted to hit those with you. Carl in Renner, South Dakota wants to know, should I lock corn basis for March or May on my on-farm storage now? Carl, and anytime you look at basis, it has to pertain to normal. And so if you're getting bids that are better than normal for the period of time when you anticipate taking the grain out of the bin, there's nothing wrong at all with locking in those basis levels. I'm not familiar enough with spring basis levels all around the country, so I don't know if those basis levels are stronger than normal. You're uh, your local buyer can tell you whether it's a, and, and hopefully you have maybe some of your own records, but if they are stronger than normal with the futures market down, it is a good time to lock in basis and then catch the, the rally in the futures market. We did that for summer delivery this year and in the, in the spring when prices were cheap, and then we caught the nice rally and it worked out extremely well, and I think it may work out exactly that way next year. Okay. We've got a question from Glenn in Bryan, Ohio. This is at Glenn Newcomer on Twitter. He wants to know, in regards to the grain markets, should we be looking for a dead cat bounce, or has this market cat used all nine lives? <laughs> I like the question. That's really that's good. You know what? Nine, probably eight. That we've lost eight of them. <laughs> now I think that the uh, I think the markets about will bounce right now. I think again the the, the selling the new selling come to the market uh, coming to the market in just the next thirty days. I think will be relatively small. At the same time that the buyers are anxious to get inventory accumulated. And, and we saw the, the market bounce in corn today. We know the specs are short this market. And so if we can get the market to turn into an uptrend, we can get a round of short covering on the part of those specs. And we might have a nice little pop just ahead of harvest that should be sold. Okay. And so if I'm selling that pop just ahead of harvest, do I want to go ahead and market 
X percentage of my bushels, or do I just want to sell the stuff that I'm having a hard time finding storage for? I think it's the latter. I think that you sell the bushels that you're not going to be able to hold. And you do that on a, on a good rally in the market. We'll get a sell signal. Hopefully, we'll get a sell signal. Make the sale and then be patient. And as we come back into harvest, then you can look at maybe reowning that inventory if that fits your business model in Chicago. Okay. But as you were saying, if I've made sales earlier in the year, this is the time to look for re-ownership on both corn and beans. We've been very aggressive buyers this week. We okay. think that, that these price levels uh, represent good value for ownership. Dead cat bounce on the wheat market. Do you anticipate that coming soon, or is it going to take some time to work through these massive harvests we've had domestically and internationally? We actually had a sell signal just, I think, about three weeks ago on wheat. We had a very nice rally in wheat and, uh, and an opportunity for people to, to generate some cash flow and, and, and be able to move in some of that inventory that needed to go. Uh, we're now in the bottoming phase, and we haven't seen any kind, really much of a pop-up in the market yet. So the market, that's, that's one that's going to struggle. And, and then just week we, this week, we saw estimates for the Argentine crop, sorry, the Australian crop uh, be increased uh, because their weather has been better than 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 normal, and so uh, the 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 woes just keep coming, That's unfortunately. Right. But again, protein is going to be the real value this okay. year. Uh, our final question from our Twitter followers is from Buresh. He's asking: Is there any possibility the 10% ethanol blend will be raised soon, or more broadly? What's your take on ethanol demand going forward? Either we raise E10 to E15, or do we find an export market? Where do you see that going? Well, the, the, the issue with the, uh, changing a blend is a political issue. And, and I don't know what the politics are going to be between now and the end of the year, but my guess is they'll be focused on something else. And uh, so I don't expect to see any big changes in really anything uh, uh, in ethanol until we get through the election and see what, who the new administration is going to be and, and then see what their policies are going to be. That being said, I have heard concerns that the Brazilian sugarcane crop isn't as performing as well, so we might be shipping ethanol to Brazil. Have you heard that on, yes. on a larger scale than normal? Yes, yes, and we think that will happen. Okay, so we should see we, corn sales to Brazil outright, potentially, Yes, as well as additional strong ethanol grind in the U.S., for ethanol be shipped to Brazil. Yeah, the ethanol grind has been has been very strong this year, surprisingly strong. And we've seen expansion in ethanol plants and, and profitability. Uh, people who own shares in ethanol stocks, uh, ethanol plants are very happy this year. All right. Soybean meal, John Roach, do you see, are, are you in a buy signal right now for bean meal? Yes, we've been in a buy okay. signal for I think the last three days. The uh, 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 meal was the strong component of the soybean market last year. This year it's soybean oil. That's been the leader. And so uh, the soybean meal has been a little bit more of a drag, uh, but still we're looking at price levels that we think you accumulate feed. All right. Final question before you go, John Roach. Every week we ask our analysts to define terms or phrases we use quite frequently in this market. And we've got a question for you that we know that it's something you've looked at or do look at from time to time. What is the importance of the 20-day moving average? I have very few lines on my chart, but I have a green line that's my 20-day moving average. If the price is above the last 20 days average price, prices are trending higher. If the price is below the green line, below the last 20 days average price, prices are trending lower. And so the key is that as prices that are trending higher start to roll over, and if they start, if they break down the 20 day moving average, it's telling you prices are trending lower. And so you have to be really careful. Don't let that happen without selling some grain if you're in a situation that you need to sell some grain. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this week. Thank you very much, Mike. And thanks to all of you for sending in your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will get expert analysis right to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.